Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to render out your footage in Adobe After Effects. Now you might be thinking, why would you need a tutorial on this? Isn't this pretty simple to do? Well, when you actually get down into the nuts and bolts of rendering stuff out, you'll understand that it's really important to understand all the stuff that you could do with it so that you know the best format to export it out in to use later. So for example, you don't wanna render it out in lossless you know, footage if you're just gonna be uploading it to YouTube straight from here. The reason for that is that lossless will make a 187 megabyte file that you throw in and add a vignette onto 10 gigabytes when it comes out. So that would not be good for YouTube. And vice versa, if you're gonna be using it in something really, you know, high def later on, you want that lossless footage so that when you do the final render later on, you don't lose any of the detail or the resolution later on. So I'm gonna be teaching two different methods, and that's going to be what I call in-house, which is gonna be in After Effects, and that's going to be um, After Effects' encoder. And then the other one is gonna be like out of house, and that's gonna be using Adobe Media Encoder, which is Adobe's software that just basically you can render out anything in any format you want. So it's really, really great, and a lot of the times I'll actually send it to here. So let's first go over the stuff in After Effects. So I have this footage here, I threw it in and then I just threw two little effects on it so we're actually doing something to it. And then the next step you wanna do is you wanna click on the composition, make sure it's selected, make sure you're selected down here. Go composition and then add to render queue. And that's gonna be control M if you you know like keyboard shortcuts. Let's just delete this top one off here. So this is the render queue. And what's important about the render queue is, is it doesn't just start like in um, Premiere Pro, you can kind of just have one of them and then you render it out and you go to the next one, render it out, or you can add them to uh, Adobe Media Encoder. But in this one, you could actually render out a bunch of different compositions at the exact same time. So you could line them all up, set all their settings and click render and it'll go through one by one by one, rendering them all out. And that's why you put it in the queue because a lot of times you will be doing stuff like that. But let's, let's get down into just this one right here. So we have three really options that we can choose here. And I guess a fourth one up here if you want to just have a log if you uh, really wanna see what it's doing. But we have uh, three major options here. This one is really easy. You click on it, it's gonna show you where it's gonna be saved to. Um, so just choose the folder that you want it to be saved to, click on it, rename it, great, good to go. The other one here is the render settings. And a lot of this stuff is on the actual rendering itself. How's it gonna do it? Is it going to, um, is it gonna be rendering out the best? Is it gonna be rendering out a full resolution stuff? Is it gonna be using disk cache? So it's gonna be using a lot of different things. And in all honesty, unless you specifically you know, look something up and you're like, oh, I have to change one of these settings, I've always kept it on best settings for rendering it out. You're not going to you know, go off that a lot. Maybe the frame rate, you might have to choose that different sometimes. Other than that, this is pretty straightforward. Keep it on full, keep it on best unless you you know you really know that you have to change it, keep it right there. Now the one that you wanna be changing here, and it's always just gonna to go to custom even if you didn't do anything, um, is the down here into lossless. And so lossless was what I was talking about earlier. It's going to render it out, making sure it loses none of the data. It's not gonna encode it in any way. It's not going to reduce the size of it in any way. It is gonna render it out as big as possible. This is great later on if you're trying to you know add effects or maybe you're trying to keep the resolution so that nothing is lost, no amount of detail is lost. But understand that if you have like a four minute clip in here when you render it out, it's probably gonna be about 40 gigabytes long or big. So you'll run out of disk space really, really quickly if you have a bunch of these. That will be, and um, the default is an AVI format. So if you wanna do something more YouTube-esque, you could maybe drop this down to QuickTime and it used to be a little easier than this, but you wanna go into the format options after you choose the main format, then you wanna go down into the format options and then you have the video codecs that you can choose. And what I always choose for this is H.264. It's a really high definition, um, but really easy to stream it, uh, codec. So you can choose your codec right here. Um, understand that each one of these, so like if I go AVI, it's gonna have a whole nother set of codecs in here and you can download codecs, codecs offline and actually render them out in different codecs from online by just installing them into Adobe. But yeah, so right here you can really just make your choices. Um, QuickTime and AVI are probably the highest ones you'll choose. Choose one of these and then now you're set on what you're gonna render it out as. The rest of these can stay the same. Again, not gonna know it. Uh, not gonna change it unless you know you need to change it. Then the uh, audio output, a lot of the times, 
you'll notice it's going to try to out, um, output the audio that comes with it. But a lot of times After Effects, you don't really need the audio with it. So you can sometimes just turn this off um, if you're just going to like, you know, ADR it later, put audio back into it. Other than that, that's basically it for the render queue. Um, just remember you can just, you know, choose different little options here and adjust it accordingly. And then you just click this render button and it's going to start the render. And it's going to save it right in the spot that we put it. It's going to go and then it has this really weird chime at the very end of it. Which you can actually go into the files and change it. We, um, I change it to like a cool little guitar riff because the chime is a little annoying. But yeah, that's, that's After Effects' in-house one. Now, something else that we can do, is let me cancel this render right here, is we can go back into the composition here. And instead of going to add to render queue, we can go to add to media encoder queue. And this is why I said uh, you should probably have this open before you do that. Um, just because it'll take a little while to open this up and you know, kind of just want to have the flow going here. And there we go. It made it over. If this is uh, along with the Adobe Link sort of thing. Um, you know how Premiere can export to uh, After Effects and then After Effects can bring it back to Premiere. You can you know, edit stuff in Premiere and Adobe Audition. This is just another one of those links. So now we're in Adobe Media Encoder. And what's really cool about this is that it has a bunch of presets. Now it doesn't have the best way of finding the presets. You can't really search them, so you have to like do this to get down to her. But it has some really, really neat presets. For example, it has YouTube and Vimeo, it has Twitter, it has just regular HDs all the way down the scale, TiVo, Barnes & Noble book, Apple TV. I mean, it has cool presets to render stuff out in. So if you're rendering out a video for YouTube, you could click this YouTube 1080p and you'll see that it defaults here to H.264 connecting to the dynamic link server. Any second now. Okay, and then so it's gonna open up this thing right here, which actually looks a lot like Adobe Premiere Pro. And in here you can um, change around your formats and stuff as well, and it actually looks almost identical to Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you're more used to Adobe Premiere Pro, throw it into a uh, media encoder and then just click click right here and you can open it up and you've got all your settings just how they are in Adobe Premiere Pro. But yeah, this has a lot more options. Um, I guess it doesn't have more options, but it has more, it's more user friendly. And a lot of times that's that's really nice. And if you wanna add multiple to it, you could, um, you could actually have like Photoshop open and Premiere Pro open and then just all of them have a button export to Adobe Media Encoder. You could have them all lined up here and then just click the play button and it'll do all the stuff for you. That about covers it for the basics of how to render out in Adobe After Effects. I uh, hope you learned something. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and throw those in the comments below. Subscribe to see more Adobe-related content. And until next time, guys, see ya.